All right, we're here. We finally got McGee's first album, pronounced McGee. Now, McGee has, you know, been one of my favorite artists this year. Um, I've become a big fan of all of his work that I've heard so far. Um, everything that Dijon does, everything he's done with Dijon. McGee is a big surprise for me this year because um, I was not expecting to hear an album, you know, that's so amazing like that. And I'm referring to um, Two Star and the Dream Police. That album is still in rotation. I listen to it at least once a day. You know, when, I, when I'm bored of everything else, I'm going back to that album. So um, it's definitely a top contender for album of the year, in my opinion. Um, I do want to see him live. I can't wait to for the tour. And I'm excited to hear what he has coming next. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we won't hear anything new for a while. Obviously, he just dropped the whole album this year. But um, going forward, I will be tapped into anything that he does. You know, I'm here for it. A Museum Full of Contradictions is still in rotation every now and then. I love pretty much everything on that album as well. Um, and now we got Pronounced McGee. Now, I know there is an EP. I think it's called Fool or Fools. I'm not too sure, but I will be doing that at some point as well. But I want to get all the albums out the way, then we'll get to the EP. But anyway, I don't want to waste any more time. I'm excited to hear this. Let's get into it. We got track number one, If He. Interesting. Sounds different. Nice. This is nice. Love that progression right there. Oh, that chord progression right there, that was sexy. You could definitely tell how much his sound has evolved and progressed since this. Um, he, sound, he sounded totally different than what I'm used to hearing him sound like, but I do like his voice like this, if that makes any sense. It almost sounds... I don't know. His voice sounds super abstract, very raw. Um, I enjoyed it though. I'm very interested to see how this progresses throughout the album. So let's keep it going. We got track number two, Roll With The Punches.
I'm gonna keep repeating it. It's so cool to see how much he's progressed from this to um, his album this year. Um, and the cool thing about it is, so far, this is sounding like a standalone project. You know what I mean? Like, this doesn't sound anything like a museum of contradiction, and it doesn't sound anything like Two Star. None of his projects sound the same. And this sounds, it sounds like a, a introduction project, you know what I mean, from 2018, you know? And, no, and I'm not comparing it to his other work. I'm just comparing it to what he put out at the time, during this time period. It sounds great. It sounds like he's always, he was just always meant to do this, you know? This, the music sounds great. I'm sure he produced all of this. Um, I, I tried looking at the credits on Spotify, but there, there were none. But I'm pretty positive that he produced all of this. Um, he's just a very talented dude, man. All right, let's keep it going. We got track number three, I Know How You Get. Waiting for this part right here. I knew that was gonna happen. Crazy. This white boy got some soul to him, man. He got some soul and some funk. He got it he got it all. He could do this, he could do the eighties R and B, he could do the eighties pop, he could do he could do alternative, he could do soul, funk. This guy is crazy, man. Definitely my favorite one so far, just cause of the the how he put that together instrumentally. Um, it sounds like something I've heard before, obviously, because you know, that's you know, funk music has that type of sound, but I, I'm, I'm, I believe he probably played all the instruments on there. Um, definitely the guitar, I'm sure of that. But it sounded super funky, which I love. I love some good funk. And one thing that I like about McGee, which is why he's becoming or he's become one of my favorite artists, is 
he could sing and produce at the same time, but I love that he allows the music to, you know, have its moment as well, where he'll, you know, sing a, uh, his verse and have the chorus, and then he'll give the instrumental, like, a little section, and then he'll come back with it, you know, and it's just it's just super dope, you know. I hope that, I honestly hope that, I, I, wouldn't, I, I don't mind him working with Dijon, but I don't want, I kind of don't want him working with anyone else other than Dijon. Because I don't want anyone to hijack his, you know, his swag. I don't want anyone to hijack what he got going on or his sound, you know what I mean? But the only one who I could see him really working with, making, you know, uh, an amazing record is probably Frank Ocean. Other than that, it's like, I don't, I don't want to hear him with anyone besides Dijon. But that's just me being selfish. All right, let's move it right along. We got track number four, You. Oh, this is nasty already. Oh, I love that intro. Nah. You can groove, man. You can groove. Oof. my favorite one sorry just had me in a chokehold i was just jamming out this whole time i love that i love that i mean i don't know what else there is to say like the just the the brilliance that this guy has just when it comes to music musicality all of it like he's uh he's amazing like i wish that i was a vinyl collector because i would get all of these vinyls but, you know, I feel like it's too late for me to start now. And that is, you know, that's that's a lot of money if you want to <laughs> get a collection. Now, and I probably won't even really use the vinyl anyway. So, um, but if I were a collector, yeah, all of McGee's albums would be purchased on vinyl. But yeah, you, favorite song so far. Let's keep it going. We got track number five, Unaware.
it's crazy that he only has a couple projects out and like he just came out the gate swinging he came out the gate talented it's something that i'm sure he's been he's probably been in music since he was a baby since he was born you know he probably comes from a family of musicians who knows like um, but this is, this is something that, you know, I'm sure he's worked at his craft and he's, you know, put into work, but this was probably instilled in him at birth, you know what I mean? And I still can't get over the fact how different his voice sounds. I think it's pretty cool how he's able to manipulate his voice, you know? Um, this dude can really sing. All right, let's keep it going. We got try number six, priorities. <laughs> Here go that funk again. two-thirds through with the album and one thing that i have to comment on um i do like his trend of on dropping short albums um i feel like that's the best way to do it especially if you're consistent and you just put out quality you don't want any filler and it just makes it easier to listen to it over and over you know that's how i feel about two star like that album you could just listen to over and over all day you know what I mean, it's like what, 32 minutes, 33 minutes, and you can just run it back. And it's just every song hits, every song is perfect. You know, Museum of Contradiction the same way, and this is just the same way. You know, he's consistent with his output. I mean, obviously, um, there's a gap between Museum of Contradiction and Two Star, but he's consistent with his quality. And, you know, it's, it's something that. You know, a lot of artists struggle with. They want to bloat the album. Just put out the good stuff, and I think you'll earn more respect, and people will, will respect you more as just an artist. You know, don't give the... Why, why give filler just for stream streaming numbers? And, you know, you can tell he cares about what he puts out. All right, let's keep it going. We got track number seven over here. clear each album has a consistency in the sort of vibe that he's trying to put forth and the, just the sort of sound that he wants. And this is very funky.
I always love a good talk box. Definitely an album that you want to play when it gets warmer out. It's definitely a summer album. It's definitely a get out, go out, get some shit done, go to the beach, have fun with your friends, party. Like, it's definitely giving that, that type of vibe. This is going to be an album that'll be played definitely in the summer for me. I'm sad it's almost done. We got track number eight, Annabelle. Someone's going to sample that if they haven't already. Annabelle, that creepy ass doll, that exorcist type shit. Oh. Love the guitar. sound good like him and mind design would make some amazing music this kind of reminds me of mind design a little bit hit me with it hit me with it Jam out, just jam out. All right, we're on the final track of the album, track number nine, I. Let's go. Okay, this is kind of different. That was pronounced McGee by McGee. I, you know, 
I don't know what else to say about this dude. You know, he's very talented, obviously, back then as well. I love the album. Love the direction he went with this one. It's very funky, very soulful. Um, doesn't, doesn't sound anything like Museum of Contradiction or Two Star, which I can appreciate because I do like that he's able to evolve his sound. He wants to do better. He wants to change it up, switch it up. You know, he can do a lot of things. So, you know, I, I, I actually really enjoyed this. Um, I will be doing the full EP um, next, maybe next week or something like that. But, um, yeah, I'm excited for whatever he has to come next. I would, I do want to see him on tour. And I do hope he has his hand in a lot of uh, D. John stuff, you know, coming up. I hope D. John drops this year. Fingers crossed. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all that good stuff. And leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite track was. All right, I'll catch you next time.